Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on inputs and input configuration. Inputs exist in the data editor, which is a user interface around your front matter and your data files. Here we have a data file called examples.yaml, which we can see is just pretty standard YAML. An input consists of a key and a value which corresponds to the key value pair in the data file or front matter. Changing the value in the input and hitting save will change the value in the source code. Something to note is that Cloud Cannon will format your keys in the data editor to be a little nicer to read. Here we have a long key in camel case, and here a long key in snake case. If we go back to the data editor, we'll see that these have both been converted to title case with spaces in between the words to make them nicer to read. Each input has a type, which changes how you interact with the data. By default, an input is a text input, which lets you enter a string of characters. The type of the input is often defined by the name of the key. Here we have a key named color, so we have a color picker. Here we have a key ending with the word image, so we have an image picker. This key is named URL, so our input has a URL preview. This key ends in HTML, so now we have a fully fledged HTML editor. I want to make this bold and I want to italicize this word, hit save. And if I look in my source code, I'll see that indeed this was saved as HTML with HTML tags. The type of the input can also be inferred based on the type of the value. Here I have a value which is a number and a value which is a date time. If I go back to the data editor, I'll see that this is now a number input, and this lets me change the date and the time. It's important to note that the type of the value takes precedence over the type of the key. Here, my key ends in the word image, but unlike before where we had an image picker, this input lets us change the date and the time. It wouldn't make sense to have an image picker here because the value is clearly not a path to an image. Inputs can also be complex structures like arrays and objects. Here I have an array of strings which I can add to, rearrange, clone, and delete from. And here I have an object which I can open up in its own nested data editor. This object has its own keys and values, its own nested object with its own keys and values, and even something complex like this array of objects. Basically, if it can be represented by your data file, it can be represented by an input. Now let's talk about input configuration. Here I have a site where I like to post reviews on various things. Let's open one of these reviews now. In the sidebar is a data editor for my front matter. If we open up the source code for this file, we can see my front matter in YAML at the top of the file. Each review has the name of the product, a short blurb, the product's image, and whether or not the product is featured on the front page. There's also a numerical rating, the date that the review was published, and the author of the review. We also have this scary looking ID field and a list of related articles. I'll talk more about both of these fields later on in the video. I'd like to make all of these inputs a little more user friendly. To do that, I'll use Cloud Cannon's input configuration. The first thing I want to do is change the label of this title key to be a little more descriptive. To start, I'll need a cloudcannon.config file. This lives in the root of your site and can be in a variety of different file formats. I'm using YAML for this video. Here is the Cloud Cannon config file that I had already added to my site. 
Init is some data config for my staff members data file and some collections config for my collection of reviews. I want to change the label of the title key. So to this, I will add label of product name and hit save. If I then go back to any of my reviews, I'll see that the label for the title key was changed to product name. If I then go into the source code for this file, I'll see that the title key has remained unchanged. We've only changed the label of the input. Next, I want to add a short description to this input to give some context to my team members. I'd also like for there to be more space to write in here. While we're at it, I'd like this to be a fully fledged image picker and for this to be an on and off switch. I wanted to add a short description to my blurb input, so I add the blurb key and then a comment. I also wanted there to be more space to write in, so I will change the type of this input to a text area field. I wanted the type of my prod image input to be an image picker, so I will add the type of image to this input. And finally, I wanted to change the type of my featured input to be a switch. I'll then save this and wait for my site to build. Then I can go back to my reviews and see that my blurb now has a short comment. The input is also now resizable to give me more space to write in. My prod image input is now a proper image picker and my featured boolean switch is now a proper switch. Some input types have more options when it comes to their configuration. Here I have a numerical rating which represents a 0 to 5 star review. As it stands however I can go over 5 stars and even add weird decimals. Let's fix this by going back to our Cloud Cannon config and adding a key for the rating input. I'll change the type of this input to a range so that the input is now a slider. Then I can add an options object to this input. I want to give my ratings a min of 0, a max of 5, with a step of 0 0.5 so that I can give half stars. I will now save and wait for my site to build. Now I can go back to my reviews and see that my rating input is now a slider with a minimum of 0, a maximum of 5, with a step of 0.5 in between. Next, I want to make my author input only accept values from my staff members data file. This is a YAML file which contains an array of staff members. I'll first go back to my Cloud Cannon config file and add another key for my author input. I want to make this a drop down menu, so I will give it the type of select. I then need to tell this input how to populate its list of selectable values. I'll add an options object, and to this, I'll type values of data.staffmembers. The data part of this tells this input to look in the data files of this site and the staff members is the name of the file that we want to use. It's important to note that this will only work because in our data config we've allowed Cloud Cannon to discover the staff members data file. I'll hit save and wait for this to build. I can then go back to my reviews and see that my author is now a drop down menu with the values from my staff members data file. Cloud Cannon automatically used each name value in the staff members data file to populate this list. This name value is also what will be saved back to the front matter of my reviews. Similarly, 
I want to make my list of related articles only accept values from my collection of reviews. The difference being, I want to be able to select multiple related articles. To do that, I will change this into a multi-select. I'll go back to my Cloud Canon config file and add the related articles key. I'll give it the type of multi-select and I also need to give this an options object and a values key. This time I want it to use my reviews collection so I will add collections.reviews. The way that Cloud Cannon automatically detects your collections varies depending on the static site generator that you're using. I know that my reviews collection has already been detected, so I don't need to add any collections config to make this multi-select work. The multi-select input works for arrays of values. Only a single string will be saved per related article. I can choose which front matter value from the review will be saved to this array. By default, Cloud Cannon will use the ID front matter field, but this can be changed by setting the value key option. I'm going to explicitly set this to use the review's ID. Trying to pick my desired reviews from a list of IDs might be pretty confusing. I can set what value is shown in the multi-select by setting the text key option. I'll set this to use the review's title. I'll then hit save and wait for my site to build. Then I can go back to my reviews and see that my list of related articles is now a multi-select. I can add to and remove from this list as I choose. The value shown here, set by the text key, is the review's title. The value that will be saved back, set by the value key, is the review's ID. If I hit save, and go into my source code, I'll see my list of related articles in ID form. This ID is obviously pretty important, and I don't want to accidentally edit it in the data editor. I can save myself by hiding the input in the data editor. I'll open up my Cloud Cannon config file, add the ID key, and set hidden to true. Once this is saved and built, I can go back to my reviews and see that the ID input is nowhere to be found. This is looking pretty good, but what's it like when I make a new review? It would be nice if the publish date was automatically set. Also, I know that the ID key is important However, I now have no way to set it. Both of these problems can be solved using Cloud Cannon instance values. Instance values let you configure how an input is instantiated. This lets you populate that input with a certain value whenever an instance of that input is created. This occurs, for example, when you create a new collection item. To start, I'll go back to my Cloud Cannon config and add some input configuration for my publish date. I'll give it the special key of instance value and set it to now. Now whenever I make a new review, the publish date will automatically be set to the current time. I'll then set the instance value on the ID input to use UUID. This stands for Universally Unique Identifier. Now whenever I make a new review, it will automatically generate a UUID and set it in the ID field. It is extremely unlikely that any UUID is generated more than once. I can therefore be sure that all of my reviews will have a distinctly unique identifier. I'll hit save and wait for my site to build. I'll now go back and create a new review.
If I open up the source code for this review, I'll see that the publish date was set to today's date and time, and I'll see that the ID was set to a new, unique identifier. All of the input configuration in this inputs object is global. That means that all of the input configuration that I've just done will apply to all the inputs in my site that share the same key. I can scope some input configuration to a specific collection by adding it to that collection's configuration. I can also scope it to a specific file by setting an underscore inputs object within that file's front matter. For any input, Cloud Cannon will merge the configuration from each scope in a cascade. The more specific the scope, the higher priority it has in the cascade. I have a collection of news articles, and I'd like to add a comment to the title input within each one. I'll add some collections configuration for my news collection, and then I'll add underscore inputs to that. Then I'll give my title input a comment. I'll then save these changes and wait for my site to build. If I open up one of my reviews, I'll see that no comment was added to this title input, but if I open up one of my news articles, I can successfully see the comment that I just added. However, the label for this title is also set to product name because we declared that label in the global input configuration. The configuration cascade merged the global configuration with the scoped configuration. There are a few ways that I can solve this issue. If I go back to my Cloud Cannon config, I can explicitly declare a new label scoped to my news articles. Alternatively, I can move all of the input configuration that I made before into the reviews collection configuration. This would scope all this input configuration only to the reviews collection. Another way to solve this would be to remove this input from the configuration cascade. This would mean that the title input within the news collection would not take configuration from any less specific source, for instance, the global configuration. I can do this by setting the cascade to false. I'll hit save and wait for my site to build. Now if I go back to my news article, I'll see that the key has changed back to title but I've retained my comment from before. If I want even more specific configuration, I can go into the source code for this file, and in its front matter, add an underscore inputs object. Here, I'll change the label for the title. Now I'll go back to my content editor, and I'll see that the label for the title key was changed to headline. Even though we turned off the cascade for this input, the front matter configuration is more specific than the collection configuration.